Explained by the Billy Meyer contacts. Mysteries, myths, legends, conspiracy theories, historical inaccuracies, and more. Compiled by David Chance, revised October 18, 2023. Stonehenge. Contact Report 216. However, just like the Stonehenge structures, i.e. the megaliths, located to the north of Salisbury, Wiltshire in southern England, the Nazca layouts also served as general meeting places as well as judgment sites and sites of execution. Contact Report 285. But may I now still ask whether you are well versed in the original Stonehenge circumstances. By that I mean the megalithic monument north of Salisbury in England. The enormous ruins are partly still allowing to recognize quite accurately the arrangement of that time. The whole originally consisted of thirty mighty pillars, which were arranged in a circular row, whereby these were connected at the top with likewise large stone horizontal beams. Within the large circle there was at least originally a second, smaller circle. In latter's central middle was something like an altar or sacrificial stone, but what it represented has hitherto remained a secret. Also, the actual sense of the monument has not been clarified until today. It is generally assumed that it was originally a religious building, but there are many different interpretations, especially towards the occult. I have indeed dealt with the megalithic facility of Stonehenge. The site, located in the Wiltshire area of southern England, was built in several construction phases, whereby almost concentric circles of mighty stones were inserted into an original trench and wall ring with radial extension. There were initially in fact 30 stones, as you said, namely in the outer ring. This one consisted of four-meter-high stone pillars connected by capstones, that is to say by horizontal beams, as you call them. In this ring, that is to say circle, there was a horseshoe-shaped settlement consisting of five large gate-like trilithons. In the center of both circles, there was in fact a structure, a large carved stone which served as an altar as well as a sacrificial site and central observation and analysis point for astronomical calculations. Furthermore, the whole was a place of worship of religious barbarian form, whereby the altar played an important and very special role, because on this altar, sacrifices were also offered, which were not rarely of human nature. The altar was therefore also a sacrificial stone. Moreover, the same altar and cult sacrificial stone was also used as an execution stone which means that not only human sacrifices were offered on it, but also executions took place on it with regard to those sentenced to death. Then the whole thing was a site of cultic worship, as well as place of astronomy, and site of blood at the same time. That is right, whereby, however, it must not be forgotten that at that place there was also taught and decided about right or wrong, and thus also about life and death. Contact Report 710 this also happened with the peoples in South America and Asia, where the long-skulled, the earth foreigners and the other earth foreigners, who were physically earth foreign, normal-skulled or small and big-headed and big-eyed, but also giants, as for example in South America, were also involved and had a culturally completely different influence on the earth peoples on all continents. As a result, different buildings, villages, cities, Cult objects and pyramids, as well as sites with large menhires, were also created all over the world, such as Stonehenge in England, near Avesbury in Wiltshire, about 13 kilometers north of Salisbury, and in Armenia the Stonehenge or megalithic fields in Zorakerer, near the mighty mountain ranges of the Caucasus, whereby the techniques of the earth foreigners were used in transporting and erecting the megaliths, which weighed many tons. The earthlings at that time were not capable of doing such work themselves, quite contrary to the assumptions of the so-called clever researchers and scientists of the New Age, who think up all kinds of fantastic things concerning the creation and working of monoliths, etc., which could have been brought about by the earlier earthlings with manpower. This, like for example also the heads on the Easter Islands, 
which were transported and erected there with the help of earth foreigners, as also happened in other places, where it is seriously claimed that not earth foreigners, but the earth foreigners themselves transported the enormous weights of tons rolling on tree trunks, and then also lifted up the monoliths weighing many tons with tree trunks and other wood and multiple manpower, etc. Contact Report 829 So, I think I may now speak openly and say that beings from the depths of the space of this universe visited the Earth before there were Earthlings. Since then, however, their descendants have come here again and again, creating many things for the human beings of the Earth in the last 390,000 years or so, which were often only achieved with hovering techniques. Especially what concerned the moving, setting up and stacking of building elements weighing tons, such as 10, 20, 30, 50 tons, or even heavier elements, was done by technology that made it possible to levitate the materials. In very few cases, something was also moved telekinetically, but this was a real rarity. The processing of the heavy elements was usually done by machine, if one may say so to what was just used. The machining was done such that the elements were so accurate to the hundredth or even thousandth of a millimeter that everything fitted together in such a manner that practically not even a hair could be pushed in between. This is precisely something that the clever earthlings of today, who deal with these things of the past in big words and knowing, cannot understand how everything really came about in this respect. Their wild fantasies of how it was and how it all came about are truly hilariously daft. Well, when the earthlings at a much later time, as a result of traditions, etc., worked, hewed, and chiseled stones, that was primitive again. But the fact is that the earthlings at that time did not have heavy machinery with which they could have done everything, and especially not with human power, as many archaeologists, etc., imaginatively spout, about and think up the most impossible constructions with which the human beings of earlier civilizations are supposed to have made the impossible possible and managed it. Also, with guidance and assistance, entire cities were built all over the earth, some of which, however, sank in the seas or in large lakes in later times as a result of natural phenomena, were overgrown by primeval forests, or others were covered by sand drifts. Contact Report 832 Now, also the thousands of languages of Earth humans, as well as the gods and their worship, and the religions and faiths arising from them, as well as the technologies by which many things were erected in ancient times which would have been impossible by human beings' powers, were therefore not created by Earth humans alone, but by the knowledge and the energy and the capabilities which were from outside the Earth. But you should mention that we Pliaran and our very distant ancestors, who first came to Earth already 25 million years ago, were in no manner involved in these developments, just as we also never had anything to do with the foreigners, so they still today and never in the future will be able to contact us or fathom our presence. Contact Report 836 Therefore he or she the earthling, the human being, also does not know that actually the alembracing being depends on swinging waves, as also on sounds resulting from them. The sun, as the authoritative celestial body of the system, orders the distance of planets away from it in its system area by means of swinging waves and sounds, something that is obviously not yet known to the great science of astronomy, because at least I have never heard of it. But it is the case, as I learned from Svath and was able to sense and hear through his apparatus, that every system satellite actually orbits around the sun with a very specific swinging wave, that is to say vibration. This swinging wave also corresponds to a very specific wavelength as well as an impulse, which in turn produces a special sound. I could perceive that is to say feel and hear all this through Svath's equipment and such swinging waves and sounds were also known and useful to the faraway travelers, who also used them in early times on Earth, and produced monumental works with them. They were even able to move the heaviest things through the air with it, 
which I mentioned years ago when I mentioned something about the building of pyramids in Egypt. At that time, I simply used the term telekinesis to explain it, because it is possible through the powers of thought, which it actually was, but in this respect, it was used to handle everything in the manner that certain swinging waves were used in connection with sounds. So basically, I said at that time what is really true, but I did not explain that it was not a matter of mental teleportation in the actual sense, in order to transport the heavy cuboid blocks for the building of the pyramids, but precisely through a teleportation that was based on swinging waves and sounds, in other words, in a natural manner. If natural energy and power were used at that time to lift and levitate, then it was done in a different manner than through the actual application of thought power. And this was actually used at that time and even earlier for transport by those who had traveled far and wide, also for the precise production of the huge cuboid blocks, which today could not be moved even with huge machines, and could not be produced so skillfully with all modern tools.